Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. First, a word from our sponsor. The Daily Compliance News for January 4, 2022, the SBF pleads not guilty edition. And we begin with that story from Reuters as Sam Bankman Freed played pleaded not guilty Tuesday to criminal charges. He cheated investors in the now defunct FTX cryptocurrency exchange and caused billions of dollars in losses in what the prosecutors have called an epic fraud. He entered his plea in Manhattan court where he faces eight criminal counts, including wire fraud. He has been set for trial on October 2, 2023, and it's estimated the trial could last up to four weeks. Next up, from the Wall Street Journal, Risk and Compliance Journal, Richard Vanderford reporting that the IRS sees crypto companies as potential crime-fighting partners. The, or rather, a top IRS law enforcement enforcer said the IRS wants to partner with the industry to fight financial crime. The IRS Criminal Investigative Division is bringing on hundreds of new agents this year, including many who will be directed to work on digital assets and cyber crime. So, um, the IRS and crypto, who knew it? Next up from the Financial Times, Uruguay's passport scandal is forcing a reckoning on corruption in the country. A scandal over fake passports in the country has ballooned into accusations of political espionage and corruption that could threaten the nation's reputation as a beacon of stability in Latin America. It started in September with the arrest of a personal bodyguard to the president on charges he led a criminal ring that for a fee issued counterfeit Uruguayan passports to foreigners, including Russian oligarchs. The uh, gentleman has denied the claim against him. The scandal, however, has expanded, as scandals tend to do, and now the president of Uruguay is embroiled in it. And our final story comes to us from, I'm not sure what you would call it. I guess you would say it started in the world of sports, but it's much more than that, and it revolves around DeMar Hamlin, his catastrophic injury on Monday Night Football, and ESPN. Um, ESPN, of course, is the worldwide sports leader. Well, now they're the worldwide news leader, and they're at the center of this. They both uh, were showing it as a football game, and they were reporting on it as it happened in real time. And then one of the things they reported was that the NFL gave the teams five minutes after Hamlin was carted off in an ambulance to get ready to start. The NFL vehemently denies this, and ESPN has released a statement saying that that's what they were told by the NFL. Not particularly surprising considering how tone-deaf the NFL is, but eventually they all got it right. Our wishes and thoughts and prayers go out to Hamlin and his family. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.